How's everybody doing today? Good. Well, you know, the big point of emphasis this week, you know, when I talked to you early in the week, was to improve as a team, you know, to um, work on things that we needed to improve on. I think in some areas we've done that, in some areas we probably need to do better. And it all comes down to, you know, when you focus, you have mental intensity. That's when you usually pay attention to detail. That's when you usually do the little things right. And that's usually when you improve. So we need to continue to do that because really we're trying to create the kind of practice habits that guys can carry over in the game. And it's even been the case sometimes where guys do things correctly in practice and then they don't do it in the game. Same scenario, same play, same defense, same cover, whatever it is. So, you know, that kind of consistency is what we need if we're going to continue to improve. Now, we had a couple guys that we changed their numbers. Um, and really, we've had some issues because we have double numbers from 29 to 0. So it must be in vogue not to have a number above 29. Right? And if we had 42 single digit numbers, we would have 84 people that had them because they would all, two guys would want them. All right, now the problem with that is, is when you get on special teams, we already got called for having two 21s in the game, in one game, uh, at the same time. We can't take people out of the game and put other guys in because we have number issues. So this is a special teams issue. It's not really anything other than that. So Reuben Foster is going to be number nine. Derrick Henry is going to be 27. And Alti Tenpenny is going to be 28. OK, so that's um, big. You know, this is homecoming. Uh, I think it's always special to be a part of homecoming because it's special to so many people uh, who come back here who have, you know, great memories. Um, and, you know, I hope a lot of gratitude for those memories that they had that they developed and the relationships that they developed when they were in college. And this gives them an opportunity to come back and renew, you know, some of those memories as well as some of those relationships. And um, it's always great to have those people come back to the University of Alabama and be a part of, you know, our team. So we always look forward, you know, as a team to homecoming. Uh, we don't really have any new injuries, you know, to report, uh, but we do have one guy, Ha Ha Clinton Dix, is suspended uh, indefinitely for violation of team rules and policy. And look, guys, I'm going to be consistent. All right, when guys get suspended, I never ever say what it's for. All right, so I'm not going there. So don't ask me. All right, it's the way it always happens. All right, every guy. All right, they do right they wouldn't be getting suspended, all right? And I don't know for how long this will be, so don't ask me that either. But that's that's the only new news we have right now. Yes, in the wake of that, what does this mean for, for Randy Collins and how he's performed going forward and, and that kind of role he's stepping into? Well, you know, Lana Collins really doesn't set, play the same position. We've been working him at that position. Nick Perry was really you know, ha -ha's back up, and Nick Perry's out. You know, he's got shoulder, shoulder surgery, so he would have obviously, you know, been a guy that had experience and played a lot in games before that would have played there. But we've been working Landon and Geno Smith primarily uh, because we moved Geno to safety, you know, way back in fall camp. Uh, so, you know, those are the two guys that will primarily play that position in this game. How do you feel like you guys have done so far this season affecting the quarterback? Uh, well, I think that we've affected the quarterback. I don't think we've made a lot of sacks. That's what you're probably asking. Uh, because if you look at the number of times that we flush the quarterback in the pocket uh, or don't really finish on the quarterback, you know, we, we've probably done that, you know, ten times that we should have, could have, whatever you want to call it, had a sack affected the play, affected the quarterback, uh, but didn't really get a sack. So sacks are not necessarily the most important thing affecting the quarterback is. Uh, like I thought we pushed the pocket pretty well, batted some balls, made it tough on the quarterback.
back in the last game. Uh, he scrambled a couple times, ran, scrambled a couple times, and threw incompletion. So we affected him, but we didn't really get a lot of sacks. All right, so I think we did the same thing at Texas A&M. You know, we had the opportunity to sack the guy a couple times, just couldn't get him on the ground. You know, very good athlete. So um, it's something that we think that we need to improve on. But what I'm talking about improving on is finishing on the quarterback. I think if we finish on the quarterback, then we will do a better job of affecting the quarterback. Outside of the business uh, side of things, uh, what are the benefits of maybe having a home and home series as opposed to some of the uh, neutral site games for scheduling? Um, so you think it's better to have home and home games? I mean, I guess to compare and contrast, what are the benefits to that, to that to a neutral site game? Well, look, it's always a benefit to play at home. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Um, I, I've talked a lot before about the fact that um, I think that playing in these neutrals and site games have given the program a tremendous amount of exposure. It was probably one of the key ingredients early on uh, when we weren't very good that we got ESPN game day to cover our game with Clemson and we won, right? which you know really set the tone for a very successful season for that team. And a lot of exposure for the program. Um, if we would have played that game at home, I'm, I'm not sure that we'd have got the same bang for our buck. It's great for our fans to play at home, uh, but I also think our fans enjoy traveling, and it's an opportunity for them to travel a lot of the fans and have a better opportunity to get tickets. So, I, I uh, but I don't, I don't think you can really separate the business side of anything. Early kick time, what's the pregame schedule like for the players and how do you keep them engaged? They just got to get up early. You know, pregame meals at 7.30. So it's early breakfast. But you know, our guys get up and go to class. So they got 8 o'clock class, a lot of them. So it shouldn't be that big a deal. But you, you know, you just got to kind of tell a player to prepare himself mentally that when you get up, the game's going to start quickly. It's different than playing night games or late games or whatever when you got lots of time. Um, but, you know, I kind of like it, you know. When you, your feet hit the ground in the morning, you know it's going to go fast and you're ready to go and you got to be ready to go and let's go play. So, um, you know, you got to be able to adapt to all those circumstances and situations and not let them allow them to affect you. Coach Cyrus Wanjo has struggled at times with consistency this season. I'm just wondering what your evaluation so far of him this year is. Well, I think Cyrus has played very well overall, if you look at overall. And I think that, you know, a lot of expectations get created, you know, with, um, with these guys. You know, I hate it that uh, Mel Kuyper and all these guys say this is the number one guy in this position and this is the, I mean, that and they don't even have an idea, right? And most of the teams haven't even evaluated them yet, right? When they're underclassmen, right? But what it does create is it creates this expectation that this guy's the best left tackle that ever played the game. So every time he gets beat, it's like, oh, he's not playing very well. But the fact of the matter is, is he still plays pretty well. Has he gotten beat a few times? Yeah. Is that unusual for any player? Probably not. And uh, and I'm sure if you ask him, he would tell you things that he'd want to improve on and do better. Uh, and I think there's things that we would like for him to prove on, improve on and continue to get better. But nobody here is disappointed in the way he's performed. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to keep on trying to help him be as a consistent performer as we can. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you.